So we teach all students English, Mathematics and Science, not because we expect them to become writers or mathematicians or scientists, but because it is fundamental in how we understand and interact with the world. And our world is becoming more and more digital. Um, last month at TEDx Toronto, a geek dad uh, told the story of how he and his kid made a computer game uh, and he made a really good point that um, we, we call the youth of today digital natives. We see how easy they take to the technology. You can give uh, a kid a tablet and within minutes they'll be playing games, like downloading apps, using it. Um, but these tablets are touch interface and have one button. If we are amazed that kids know how to use them, then we are not expecting much of our kids. <laughs> uh, and computers um, run, run our world. 67% um, of uh, British children aged 8 to 15 say they're interested in learning how to code but only three know how to code. Three percent, sorry. Um, and, and this is really strange because increasingly computers are running our world, like they monitor all our communications, they manage our bank accounts, they keep our diaries, calendars, email, they even uh, mediate our, our social relationships. So to understand the world today, um, we also uh, need to understand computers. So, um, this has been a hot topic in the media lately. Um, ever since uh, Google's Eric Schmidt last year uh, accused the UK, the country that invented the computer, of wasting its computing heritage. <laughs> um, basically, uh, in this country, Schools have been focusing on teaching software, software that uh, lets you write essays, uh, do presentations or spreadsheets, important skills, but they are not enough. Um, they, they may teach how to use the software, but give little or no insight into how they are made or how they work. And this needs to change. Um, the government knows this, uh, but it takes time. They're writing a new curriculum, uh, it's going to take time, it's going to take even longer to uh, update teacher training and give the teachers um, all the uh, uh, training they need to be able to teach the new curriculum, and in the meantime, the kids are losing out. So, <laughs> I just think that if the inventors of the computer knew that today, everyone in the UK had access to a computer, yet hardly anyone knows how to use it. They would, like, they would turn over in their grave. Um, <laughs> so yeah, uh, I just wanted to tell you um, about a project. Um, so, in March uh, last year, uh, no, actually this year, March this year, uh, a friend of mine, Claire Sutcliffe, and I uh, were at the pub, not far from here, uh, moaning about um, all the media and how they're complaining about ICT curriculum in this country. And we came up with this very simple idea. We knew that the government didn't have a curriculum for teaching computing, and we knew that teachers didn't have the expertise to teach programming. Uh, so we proposed this, like, what if me, we make the lesson plans and then we give them to professional programmers and then professional programmers go into primary schools and teach programming. And we... <laughs> Sorry, this is... Yeah. And 
So we tweeted about this and we got a huge res uh, response. We had like nearly 2,000 people saying this is something I would, I would be willing to do. So we quickly assembled a, a team to write the lesson plans. We did a lot of research, a lot of uh, late nights uh, testing projects. Uh, we tried to uh, understand um, nine-year-olds and their interests. Uh, so that's me doing research on uh, dinosaurs over there. Um, and uh, then we took our projects into schools. Uh, to test them with real kids. And, uh, uh, we developed our own matrix for determining success of a lesson plan based on laughs and high fives and fist bumps. So we uh, like learning computer science should be fun. So we developed uh, lesson plans, uh, basically um, handouts to give to the kids, all the teacher's notes, all the materials, to make it as easy as possible uh, for the volunteers to just go in and donate one hour a week to teaching it. So they don't need to do any preparation, we do all that hard work for them and they, they donate their time. Uh, our first term is based on Scratch, which is this wonderful programming environment and language developed at MIT Media Lab. Um, it's like drag and drop, you don't have to type. Um, the pieces uh, fit together like a puzzle. And uh, so this is the code in the middle that controls uh, the stage. Um, and it's very easy to make animations and then therefore also graphic games, uh, yeah, which, uh, which the kids absolutely love. that volunteered to, to toss them out for us. And we got a lot of feedback. Uh, so we spent uh, the summer improving them before releasing it to everyone. Uh, and um, at the end of uh, all the lessons, we gave the kids a survey, a very short survey, which is simply on a scale from zero to 100, where zero is boring and 100 is the most awesomest fun ever. <laughs> How fun uh, was the lesson, and I'm very proud to say that we are 92% fun. <laughs> so when we started, uh, we thought we might have, or might be able to do, you know, get our friends together, maybe we could do five schools, maybe even 20 by the end of the year. Uh, but actually, when um, we, we launched officially in September, and um, uh, sorry, <laughs> yeah, we have 300 uh, COD clubs uh, currently in the UK. Uh, we also have a traveling uh, code show, so we go around to events like this and um, we have like lots of uh, like homemade uh, Play-Doh uh, that conducts electricity, so we teach uh, children like the basics of circuitry. Uh, also a technique that we learned from TEDx, how to make the electricity conducting Play-Doh. Uh, and that's uh, some people playing a banana piano. Now if you don't know the banana piano, there are bananas hooked up to a microcontroller, hooked up to a computer, you program the computer in Scratch to play a sound when someone touches the banana. Uh, so these, are, uh, these young ladies are holding hands so that the electricity is uh, uh, going through them. On the edge here, she's holding the ground, and then since they're holding hands, the electricity goes through them, and uh, when the girl at the end touches uh, a banana, it plays a sound. So that's very popular. And it also goes to show just like 
Uh, we tried to teach him that um, computer science is very creative. Uh, you can come up with anything, and um, uh, yeah, you, you tell the computer what to do, not the other way around. Uh, so yeah, we have 300 schools, which, which is amazing, it's much more than I ever thought. However, there are 23,000 primary schools in, this, um, in the UK, so we still have a long, long way to go. Now, I was at a STEMnet uh, a meeting a couple of weeks ago, and they told me that in Camden, um, last year, no one decided to study computing A-levels. Like, this is the home of Google UK, yet there is like no one studying computing there, which is just really strange to me. And the whole tech corridor, which like includes Farringdon and of course Shoreditch, uh, Tech City, uh, Silicon Roundabout, only 17 people decided to study this. Um, and actually, even though Code Club was uh, born in Hackney, and we work in Hackney, we run it from Hackney, we only have two code clubs in Hackney. Like, even, like, I live in London Fields, and the closest primary school to me does not have a code club. So, um, we still have a lot of work uh, ahead of us, so uh, if you could all do me a huge favour, and just, like, contact your local primary school, just tell them about Code Club, it is completely free. Like, we'll find them a volunteer, they get all the materials, and um, yeah, let's uh, give everyone a chance to learn this. Thank you.